as people have started to join, we'll wait a little bit uh, for as many of them as can join to join. And we'll start the meeting in five, the webinar in five to seven minutes at the max. Yeah, sounds, sounds okay. So we have people coming in one by one. It's 12 o'clock. We'll wait five, six minutes more. And we can begin after that. So if uh, any one of you know the people who have also registered, you can give them a ping and you can ask them to join. I have also shared the meeting link uh, in our group chat.
I think we have a good number of people now. So should we start? I think uh, you can, uh, we can start. Uh, I would request Krishnan and uh, Rohini, you know, to please switch on your cameras. So, hi everyone who's present here. Uh, I'm Pratik on behalf of Fixi, along with my colleague Ms. Pritha and our guest speakers, Mr. Krishnan and Ms. Rohini. We have gathered here today to on the event of World Food Day to discuss the innovative approaches to reducing food waste and ensuring food security for all. So uh, to talk a little bit about Fixie first, we are a not-for-profit organization which uh, has the NSDC, National Skill Development Council, as our line ministry. And uh, we are also backed by Ministry of Food Processing and uh, as well as uh, FICI. So we also have a few, uh, more than a few uh, standing MOUs with FSSAI. Our main job is to bring quality skill to as many people uh, in the food processing sector as possible. So this webinar, especially on the World Food Day, is aimed to help bring you know, knowledge to people uh, to discuss innovative approaches to reduce food wastage so that we can ensure that everybody in the world has access to nutritious food at all times. Now, coming to our esteemed speakers, the first uh, one to uh, you know speak today is Mr. Krishnan, who is the co-founder and managing director of Wastelink. Uh, you can visit his website at www.wastelink.co. It is a food surplus management company that helps food manufacturers manage their surplus and waste food by transforming it into nutritional feed for animals. So the mission is to supercharge the circular economy and eliminate food wastage. So from all the food that, uh, you know, does not get consumed or reaches a little uh, near to its, you know, comfortable expiry date. I... Uh, they manage that food and turn it into waste uh, and the waste for nutritional feed for animals. So uh, beginning with Mr. Krishnanji, welcome. Uh, you are you are on mute. Ah, perfect. Thanks, Pratik. Um, sh should I get started? Or you can give a little brief about uh, what your company is, what your mission is, then sure. we can introduce Ms. Rohini, and then we can begin. Ah, okay. So I just keep it, give a quick uh, introduction then. Uh, thank you, uh, Pratik, and, and, and thanks, Vixi, for inviting me, and, and good to be uh, with this group. Um, I am uh, a co-founder of a startup that uh, really focuses on uh, uh, food waste and, and um, you know, converting near expiry, damaged and expired foods, uh, preventing them from uh, going to landfills, and actually finding higher order outcomes than composting and biogas. And this is where we've come up on animal feed today with a few other segments that we'll talk about a bit later. So quite excited to share about the innovation that we're doing uh, in the space of uh, food waste management um, uh, and, 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 what, and what tech and other things that we have brought into it. I look forward to sharing those with you. So uh, thank you so much, Krishnanji. Uh, thank you for giving us your valuable time. So on the other side of the panel, we have Ms. Rohini Saran, who is a recognized expert with over 17 years of experience in nutritional, clinical research, public health, and social impact. She also has an MBA in marketing and has dedicated has been dedicated to leading countrywide groundbreaking initiatives in maternal and child health. So with a robust background spanning multiple sectors, Rohini Ma'am also excels in form, forming strategic partnerships, designing innovative programs. So her expertise in innovation marketing and health communication empowers her to engage with diverse stakeholders effectively. With that, uh, welcome Ms. Rohini. 
Thank you so much, Prateek. Looking forward. Uh, thanks a lot, Fixie, for the invite. I think I would not take away from uh, Krishnan's time. And, uh, you know, maybe we can regroup later. So over to you, uh, Prateek. Definitely, definitely. So as people do keep on joining in, we can uh, begin the webinar. Thank you to both the speakers for giving uh, us uh, your valuable time again. Would you like me to start with it now or want to wait for a couple more minutes or are you good to go? I think I think we can start. People are joining in. Cool. Uh, am I able to present? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Use that document that we uh, is this visible? Definitely. Yes, no, and it's visible. E excellent. Cool. Thank you again. Uh, thanks all for um, you know uh, inviting me. Like I said, I uh, will. Uh, I uh, look. Excited to speak to you about a, a, a passion of ours, which uh, we, we have been working on now uh, for the last uh, uh, nearly six years. Um, I am a co-founder of a, 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 a company. We actually we're called Fort Planet Ingredients. We, we make ingredients that for use in in, in various uh, industries, primarily animal feed, but a few others as well. Uh, and what is unique about us, or what we do, is we exclusively um, uh, make those ingredients from former food stuff. So we work with the uh, food industry in uh, 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 harnessing, aggregating, gathering this uh, uh, food waste and trying to find meaningful outcomes for that. And in doing so, we believe we are generating both a, a superior environmental outcome and a superior economic outcome. Wastelink is the brand with which uh, most of the food company and the food industry knows us. Uh, our feed uh, that is uh, uh, sold to animal feed manufacturers uh, goes by the brand of EcoFeed. Um, so, um, and 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 Wastelink, like I said, was you know conceived about uh, uh, you know six years ago, largely uh, I you know kind of stimulated by wanting to do something around food waste. I think. Uh, a lot of talk around sustainability, circular economy started a few, a few years ago. And when we were looking at various uh, challenges and, and problems uh, to, to solve for, we felt that uh, food and food waste in itself wasn't quite uh, seeing the kind of innovation that was possible and, and feasible. So, you know, we and, and when we looked at uh, our food waste, I think, no, it, as you all know, it's a massive problem. It's a uh, uh, and, and huge proportion with multiple facets. So I think you no, know, uh, we broadly look at food waste in in two major buckets. I mean, there are sub segments as well. We'll come to that later. But the two major buckets. Uh, the the first bucket is the entire world of pre-consumer food waste. Pre-consumer food waste essentially is everything where food is wasted right from farming, point of origin, you know, trans transit, processing, mundis, warehouses, uh, factories, production waste, and then all the way up to distribution. So that entire ecosystem, as you all know, because you're all from, from the food industry, you know it's a massive, massive ecosystem. And that ecosystem, generates huge amounts of waste, which we call commercial food waste or pre-consumer food waste. Most people in India are, are privy to the other big segment of food waste, which is the post-consumer food waste. The waste that comes out of your plates, your restaurant waste, events, you go to marriages, you, or weddings, events, you see so much food waste. So that entire ecosystem, you know, what we call is uh, post-consumer food waste. We decided to build a, 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 a solutions that focused on pre-consumer. I think post-consumer food waste has several challenges. It's mixed waste, you know, uh, very low shelf life, um, 
typically spoil and so on. So there's largely it is in the realm of municipal solid waste and and and, and other solutions. Um, we in, in Wastelink decided that you know I think there's substantially large problem that required innovation in in pre-consumer food waste. It is this pre-consumer and post-consumer put together, which contributes to about one third of food uh, that is getting produced, which which never gets eaten. Right? I think that metric a lot of you might have heard of. Massive. I mean, it's, it's a it's an enormous metric if you, if you think of it. Uh, uh, Thirty percent of food right uh, that is produced is never eaten, and and unfortunately, uh, you know, it, it's it's um, it, it, it does it is split between both pre and post-consumer. And kind of relatively equal proportion, you know, 50, 50, 60, 40, whatever, but 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 these are all extremely large ones. And of course, for you know, number junkies, you can see you know, food waste as a country is like third largest emitter. This is you know, I there is enough publications and 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 written work around food and, and food waste being a, a, a cause of uh, or rather being contributor to, to climate change and greenhouse gas emissions and so on. So it was pretty, very, very, very clear to us that the problem needed to be solved. And it was very clear, uh, uh, I mean, and, and I think it was very clear that the same solution set will not work in pre and post consumer. So, so we decided to kind of focus in on, on, on pre-consumer food waste, uh, which is, and, and, and which means uh, waste generated by businesses that are in the business of food. Right, so now, when you look at that industry as such, I think you know it's a fairly, uh, in, you know, uh, as as you all again come from the food industry, you know, aware. It's like food industry. You know, you cannot paint it with a single brush. There are numerous, numerous segments uh, to it. Uh, so we kind of broadly bucketed them into four large segments. Uh, you know, the largest is farm and agri, which is pretty much everything from fruits, vegetables, grain and grain byproducts, even the alcohol, the brewing industry, the spent grain and so on. So pretty much the, the entire segment where food is still being processed in its original form, right? That industry, we, you know, that segment we call farm and agri segment, uh, and we estimate is about like, you know, uh, more than 50% of the food waste comes out uh, uh, in India from that segment. The second very, very large segment, uh, which is a bit more organized segment, is the entire packaged food and retail industry. These are branded foods, packaged foods that are available to you at your stores nearby or are delivered to your homes from any of the top brands in India. Uh, and so there's both the packaged food industry and then there's the retail industry, retail to sees significant amounts of uh, wastage of packaged food. And in this segment, you can further look at it as manufacturing and supply chain. Uh, you know, those of you who work in food production facilities, you know there is, you know, pre-production waste, there is production waste uh, due to various discards, peels, whatever, post-production waste, you know, floor waste, specification issues, you know, uh, cooking errors, a whole range of reasons why there's factory uh, produced waste. And then there is the entire post factory supply chain waste, which is forward distribution. Given you have a large country, you know, food is traveling large distances to reach the table of people. Uh, there is uh, uh, near expiry, there's expiry, there's damage during transit. So huge volumes of, of, of food waste are, are, are getting generated. And then there is, of course, you know, other segments, Horeka. When I say Horeka, I'm not talking about plate based and proper supply chain. You know, the organized food services industry today is so large, so many central kitchens, uh, you know, processed and semi processed or semi cooked foods moving through the supply chain, frozen and so on, uh, which, which in, in turn then generates uh, a large food waste. And then there's the meat processing industry, the rendering space. So, kind of, we, you know, we look at the entire ecosystem and kind of segmented this into four broad areas, which we believe captures the entire uh, pre-consumer uh, food waste space. Uh, Baseline today focuses on packaged food and farm and agri. Uh, I think over time, uh, we expect to cover other segments as well. Uh, or Horeca or meat is not a focus today, so we don't do uh, uh, 
uh, frozen, we don't do uh, wet. Even in farm and agri, our focus has been more on greens and not so much fruit and veg. They require you know, uh, uh, some innovation in drying technologies, processing technologies, which we've been working on, I think, and we hope to come out to those soon. But, but there's a, uh, um, but this is, again, farm and agri is such a large segment that even solving for certain sub-segments which we are focused on, I think, you know, creates massive impact. So now, when you look at, uh, you know, okay, you know, this pre-consumer food waste, uh, you know, what kind of solutions and, and what can one do uh, to create uh, uh, a meaningful uh, uh, outcome and, and an impact, right? an impact that is both sustainable, but also uh, economically feasible and viable. Because I think, you know, any business uh, would, would, would take that into consideration if you are to make a, uh, if you were to do any step towards handling your waste uh, and, and be more sustainable. So I think here's where the crux of, of what we do comes to play. Uh, um, you know, our, our focus, like, uh, uh, you know, like I said in the introduction, is really circular economy and circularity. We strongly believe that bringing in circularity uh, uh, helps produce meaningful solutions. Uh, you know, and then you see that in other segments. You see that in Apple. You see that in e-waste. You see that in plastics. Uh, several segments. I think the, the uh, focus of bringing in sustainability uh, and uh, in some sort of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, economic improvement is through building a circular economy. Now, circular economy in food waste has a very very interesting problem statement where there are two major dimensions to it. Look. The first is aggregation because we are a large country and a lot of resources has been spent pushing that food out from areas of production to areas of consumption. Areas of consumption, as you can imagine, is pretty much every state and unit territory of the country, right? So every nook and corner. So if you have to solve for food waste uh, through the supply chain, you then need to have an, um, you know, a platform that, or, or a manner in which you can collect ag and, and aggregate this. And I'll spend a little bit more time on this in a minute. And the second and equally important aspect of building a circular economy is to create value from this product that you have aggregated. Right? So, uh, so to build a meaningful solution, you kind of have to innovate on both of these segments. Right? So in the upcycling segments, I think you know we have. Uh, come up with some proprietary ways in which we can produce animal feed ingredients at very large scale by homogenizing the complex input material we get. We work with 50 odd brands. We work with thousands of SKUs. There is constant variability in what SKUs will come out as waste because you cannot go tell a brand to waste X tons of a particular type of material every month. They are, you know, what comes out is what comes out to whatever business decisions there may be. So building a, 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 an upcycling technology or a platform for that on top of that, that can then create consistent ingredients which the feed industry can use. Because you can't go and tell the feed industry, again, that there's constant variability. Because these are large scale, huge factories that require standard input, standard uh, nutrition profiles. So, you know, innovation was needed in, in, in homogenizing, in standardizing, in processing, in equipment, all of which, we, you know, we have done to create this scalable uh, uh, animal feed ingredient uh, solution. Okay. Um, and, and there are other very, very interesting applications which we are not in in a big way yet, but we expect to, which includes skin care and pharma. Uh, for example, we know once we start working in fruits and, and, and certain types of vegetables, the the waste from there can be converted into ingredients for skin care industry, pharmaceutical industry, nutraceutical industry. And similarly, food to food, uh, like in spent grain, you know, there's already a lot of uh, innovation happening there. A lot of new companies that are trying to come up in this space where you take something like a spent grain, uh, you know, uh, BSG, malt, and try to uh, create certain meaningful, nutritious, human-grade products. So I think there is a, a, a range of innovation that is yet to happen, I, I believe, in this space. And we do believe that all of these are 
superior to some of the organic based methods that we do today, which is largely around composting and biogas. Biogas is still capital intensive. The payback periods are, are multi-year. Uh, composting is great, but composting at very large scale, we still haven't seen effective solutions. Um, the, the scale at which the industry generates waste versus the scale at which, you know, because composting in many places needs real estate, needs space, it's just not there. So it's been quite a challenge. So innovating on these alternative solutions uh, is extremely, extremely important, uh, which is where uh, we as Baselink have, 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 have spent that uh, uh, the time and effort on building large scale quality facilities where we can make, uh, let's say, you know, feeding regions. And also, I think uh, because of the various segments you deal with, for example, when you deal with packaged food, you know, you can't, you can't just take the food and say, hey, you know, the packaging is not my problem because food industry and the food companies need a, a, a singular solution. So we have, uh, uh, you know, we end up then, you know, uh, of course, of course, repacking, we, 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 we recycle the packaging as well. We work with packaging vendors, uh, be it uh, the paper recycling or the plastic recycling, glass tin recycling and so on. So work with the entire range of ecosystem to that. For a food company, uh, you know, we are able to offer a, a, a single uh, uh, outcome or a single window outcome or a single solution where their entire material reaches a, a sustainable uh, end and, and, and a, a clean end. But now, um, the other important aspect, why, you know, uh, it was great to work on this upcycling uh, solutions uh, around uh, you know feed and and pharma and so on. The food industry, I think, again for those of you who, who probably operate in the space, will know. You know there are a whole bunch of other requirements. Uh, you typically do the audit of your material before you give it out to a vendor. You want traceability. You want to you know receive validation that the material that's been collected from a distributor or a warehouse or a factory has reached its intended destination. And so that's where the, you know, the second very large innovation around aggregation and platform comes to play. It's a constantly evolving solution for us. We have built a technology platform where food companies uh, actually can manage their, with their waste and, and track the handling of their waste. Uh, so every pickup is a, is, is a request and, and then you can track the progress of that request and the quantity and the volume which location it went to and so on. Uh, we have some audit functionality as well, which we have, we have digitized and, 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 and try to you know, work with food companies. So that is the last of the business process in a food company before you decide to uh, tag that as waste. So, so we have we've tried to work with food companies and their core business problem, the requirement of the finance function or the requirement of the quality function or the requirement of the, of the uh, sales, sales function and, and kind of take a clean handover of that material uh, 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 from the food company to us and then offer them this digital traceability. So I think, you know, we, 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 we built this expertise over time. It was something that was not, you know, or we didn't know about it up, up front, but we built that expertise now so that uh, for a food company, it can be a seamless handover to a credible partner who understands their concerns around traceability, around, you know, uh, audit, around controls of, of the material, right? So, you know, we have in our platform, you can track what's the count of boxes you give, what's the weight of material you give, and then we, report, we, we redo the counting and weighing at our receipt facility, you know, upload proof of those things. So kind of a, a, a very, very tight system that has been built around aggregation. So, you know, aggregation is not simply like you just go and collect and then you don't know what happens. Uh, I think the food, uh, um, uh, that's what used to happen, and, and there's been a whole bunch of unscrupulous vendors who operate in this space, who, who take such material, repurpose it for human consumption, sell it in the black market, and all of that. So, but but I think with our tech-enabled solution and what we have built, we have been able to allow brands to stop working with such vendors and 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 come on to a a professionally run, transparent, traceable, tech-enabled platform. And there's a lot of innovation we're still doing on the platform. I think we're expanding the audit functionality. We want to do box level tracing, bag level tracing, which will give brands uh, complete oversight into everything that's happening with the material. But these are still steps that we intend to take uh, as we scale over time. But uh, but yeah, I think but we have a reasonably unique offering uh, in the marketplace now. 
Uh, so I think <clears throat> I'll pause with that. I think it probably used up my 15 minutes and I think uh, happy to me. There's more I can keep talking, but I would, I would love to uh, uh, hear uh, you know, uh, uh, the next speaker speak as well. And then happy to address questions and, 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 and talk about this problem statement and what we do. So we'll be taking the questions in the chat at the end of the webinar. But it's a really interesting model uh, and an interesting way of looking at things uh, like when people talk about sustainable future uh, in the context of food. Uh, most of the thinking of the people get stuck towards humans, but uh, expanding on that uh, in the terms of taking it to the animals that we also get food from, like for cows, we get milk uh, for the non vegetarians out there. We get chicken. So that's a really, really innovative thinking in uh, innovative way of finding the gap and finding a way to fill it. Yeah, no, it, it, indeed, Patrick, I think it is a, it's an important problem that must be solved. So I think, you know, we are happy to be doing our part on that. Definitely pleasure to have you here now uh, to bring on board Miss Rohini. Uh, over to you, ma'am. I Thank think you. we have already uh, introduced you, introduced you well, but for the people who are joining in late, uh, Rohin, Ms. Rohini Saran uh, is a recognized expert with over 17 years of experience in nutrition, clinical research and public health. And ma'am uh, excels in forming strategic partnerships with design innovation programs and driving advocacy efforts to improve health outcomes on a global, global scale. Ma'am is also the associate director of PATH. So now over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Pratik, for this introduction. And thank you so much, Krishnan, for a wonderful presentation. I think it's imperative that we work towards um, uh, reducing food waste, especially today with the, the World Food Day and the theme being right, for, right to food for all. So I think it's very timely and congratulate uh, you on your endeavor. So I'll very Thank quickly you. share a very brief presentation. Um, I uh, did think of presenting from a very policy um, based aspect so that, you know, it can give a chance um, for the policy makers and other businesses to really follow through. Please let me know when you see my uh, presentation, if it's up and running. It is visible, ma'am. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so, you know, today I wanted to talk about what is food security. Now, we all know that it's a state in which, you know, people at all times need to have access to sufficient, safe and nutritious food, especially to maintain their healthy life and active lifestyle. However, if you see the global uh, statistics, you know, it's we have a lot of work to do. There, there is a, a huge prevalence of global hunger and food insecurity. Uh, as per FAO, we have about 1.3 billion people who suffer from moderate food security and about 900 million people who uh, suffer from severe food insecurity. Uh, as a repercussion, when we look into and deep dive into malnutrition and undernutrition, we look at about 3.1 billion people who cannot afford a healthy diet. Uh, and especially when we look at food pricing and the cost of diet and affordability, the FAO food price index averaged about 124.3 points in 2023. There are affordability challenges, particularly in the global south. And with the climate change on food security, we see that, you know, um, there's chances of increased hunger. 80 million more people are expected to face hunger by 2050. And when we talk of regional food security trends, whether it's uh, Africa or South Asia, there is severe impact due to rising food prices, economic shock, wars, etc. Now, why food boost wastage becomes important? Now, loss of food along the uh, supply chain is there, for whether it's from production or consumption. But the extent of food wage, particularly in India, and uh, Krishnan gave you the latest numbers. I may have a little dated number, but in 2023 was close to 68 million tons of food, which was annually wasted in India. There is a lot of monetary waste from food wastage uh, also, especially when we look at the Indian currency, about 1 lakh crore annually is uh, under post-harvest losses. And under the post harvest losses, we see 14 to 16 percent of fruits and vegetables and about 10 to 12 percent of cereals. And especially in terms of the uh, environment, when we see six to seven percent of India's total greenhouse emissions 
food base is the responsible one. So there is a lot of emphasis that needs to be on food based ditch. Now, why is it important is because we are all suffering from a global food security challenge. There is a lot of political in uh, instability. Of course, climate change and nutrition are key drivers. There are supply chain disruptions. There are economic shocks and poverty. And especially when we're looking at the agricultural productivity and land degradation, South Asia in particular faces a declining crop yield due to soil degradation and erratic landfall. Now, food-based aid while is a very big issue in India, but it is also a global issue. Especially in the developing countries, we see a trend of post-harvest losses. And when we look at the developed countries, there is a lot of retail and household waste. Environmental uh, impact, of course, we are seeing 8 to 10 percent of global greenhouse emissions is contributed by wasted food. Now, what are the causes of food wastage? Uh, you know, A, there is huge supply chain management issue, uh, especially when we look at, uh, uh, you know, situations like COVID, etc., where inefficient logistics and transportation led to a lot of spoilage also. There is uh, inadequate storage facilities. When you go down to a, uh, you know, a storage or a warehouse facility, there is lack of uh, cold storage. There are no handling facilities. While the policies may be there, but the implementation lacks a lot of issues. Uh, when we look at the consumer behavior, there is overbuying due to a lot of mass production of foods, and there is definitely a lack of awareness. We don't really think about, uh, you know, the food that we are wasting. Now, the interconnection between food wastage and food security is uh, huge, especially when we are looking at achieving the, yes, the sustainable development goals. Uh, you know, we have lost resources in terms of water, energy and land for food that we are not consuming. There is reduced availability, uh, you know, while the wasted food can feed millions, but we are not really optimally utilizing it. There is a price what, uh, volatility when we especially look at wastage uh, in terms of pricing. How can we make more food, uh, you know, as a more affordable and an achievable uh, produce for especially the low income population. And when we look at the global food distribution, we are not focusing on food systems. We are just focusing on individual parameters, whether it's supply chain, etc. But we are not looking at the entire ecosystem in totality. Now, what could be the sustainable solutions for food security? The first one would definitely be focusing on the agriculture sector. How can we improve storage? How can we improve the transportation and the infrastructure? There is a lot of uh, smart farming and AI uh, that is currently being used for precise harvesting across the globe. And how can we transmit those best practices to India? When we look at the food recovery programs, how can we optimally set up um, frameworks where they can redistribute the surplus food to the community by establishing India already has established a few food banks and food rescue initiatives, but we need to look at it from a larger lens. And looking at the circular economy in food systems, how can we promote the use of byproducts? You know, like uh, Krishna already mentioned, how can we use all of them? And transitioning to regenerative ag uh, agriculture practices is very, very important. Now, how has India's contribution been towards uh, controlling food sale, uh, wastage? So we have the National Policy on Food Security, which already provides food to the vulnerable population. However, there are losses, losses and there are leakages in the system. Uh, the Ministry of Food Processing Industries uh, developed about 1,200 cold, uh, cold storage facilities and transportation networks. However, they are not optimally being utilized by the farmers. The PMKSY scheme by the Ministry of Food Processing again was launched to enhance the food processing and reduce power harvest losses. However, we still uh, need a lot of work, especially uh, to the last mile. Uh, Niti Aayog has started the Zero Hunger Program. Even our national nutrition strategy spoke about food wastage. And FSSAI, of course, led the food wastage awareness campaign uh, to mainly educate consumers and food businesses about minimizing food waste through better practices. Now, <clears throat> Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare also has started a lot of promotion of sustainable practices, especially when we look at waste management and the use of organic waste. 
one key thing could be collaboration with ngos uh, you know we've seen some wonderful work by goonj and feeding india and uh, platforms like uh, zomato and uh, uh, swiggy they are also trying out uh, for food banking uh, where they at least try to take surplus businesses uh, food from the businesses to charitable organization now reducing food wastage at the consumer level um, you know is a multi pronged strategy the first definitely would be public awareness campaigns i think as consumers uh, we don't take full responsibility of the food that we eat uh, so uh, conducting food based audits or reduction strategies in the retail especially in the hospitality sectors is a must um as a religious practice you know we all uh, do donate food but not uh, you know as a norm so i think that is something that could be a part of the public awareness campaign sustainable eating habits is very essential we are used to filling up our plates so encouraging smaller portion mindful consumption composting of organic waste promotion of kitchen gardens these you know these are the strategies that could actually help us reduce food wastage and while at the government at the retailer uh, level you know we need more stronger and stringent policies that encourage donation of surplus food and also uh, promotion of demand made production currently we are you know there is so much choice available in the market and when you're not picking that food that food is going to waste so uh, i think that is something that at the policy level uh, is something that the government should take up um the call to action would definitely be like i mentioned develop policies that promote sustainable food systems and food waste reduction let's not look at each of these parameters individually we need to bring them all together for businesses we need to come up with innovations for food waste reduction and krishnan here is a great example for that and for individuals i think uh, you know how can we be conscious of food consumption how can we waste less and how can we promote and support our local food security initiatives i think that is the key so uh, my key take away on the world food safety uh, on the world uh, food day would be that food security and food wastage are deeply interlinked um but reducing food wastage can significantly contribute to improving global food security and that is something that we should aim at so that's all from my end thank you happy to take questions thank you so much for your insights goini ma'am so we do have one question at least for now uh, in the chat by mr rajiv kumar sirohi who has asked that if there is any uh, this is for mr krishnan if there is any scope for reprocessing of food uh, waste food in india yeah of course i think uh, which is the, what this is what we do uh, again waste food like i said there are so many different types to it uh, depending on um, what type of waste food we're talking about i think there are solutions available uh, so yeah absolutely i think Uh, you know that is really the focus of our business model that we have built out to reprocess food waste into something uh, usable and, and useful that's really great to know uh if anybody has any other questions you can either post it in the group chat or in the qa section we will wait for a minute if not then i guess everybody is a bit uh, too Uh, excited with the knowledge that they have gained so any questions please feel free to post them and i'll be presenting those questions to the speaker on okay so another question from mr kiran miss kiran or mr kiran is uh, are there any collection centers for the waste food Uh, maybe i can come in here i believe fssai uh, does uh, run a food waste uh, collection uh, program um, i'm not too well versed but i think it will be good for you to probably browse their website and uh, get connection however there are a lot of agencies also who do this work um, so uh, you know maybe uh, pratik post that uh, you know you can share out some information of these organizations and relevant points definitely as the webinar goes live on youtube and linkedin and uh, whatsapp channel we will definitely be uh, posting the relevant information with that 
So I guess that's it for the questions. Once again, thank you, Ms. Rohini. Uh, thank you, Mr. Krishnan for joining us on the webinar today. Thank you for your valuable time and happy world uh, food day for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. team speakers. Happy world food uh, day a heartfelt uh, gratitude from Pixie to both uh, Mr. Krishnan and Rohini, you know, for joining us and uh, giving us your inputs and your knowledge on this, uh, you know, day, which is very close to all of us who are working in the food industry. So I hope, you know, uh, we have a good learning from today. And, you know, my personal uh, key takeaway from today is, you know, you know, it is important for us, you know, at an individual level, you know, to understand and, you know, act uh, towards not wasting food from our own end. And then, you know, if we have that thought in us, that would, you know, lead to us being more mindful and you know that is all we need to do in ensuring because each one of us has a part to play in ensuring that no food goes to wait a waste right so thanks again everyone and i hope you know all of you uh would take this learning which i'm talking about and you know we can ensure that at least from our end you know we'll not be wasting food going forth right thanks so much everyone and i wish everyone a, a world food day today so thanks again, my esteemed speakers, and uh, we wish to connect more on, you know, similar um, sessions in the future. Thanks again for your valuable time. Thanks so much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.